everybody how you doing welcome to the sim hanger my name is mark and let me get started by saying the main difference between microsoft 2020 and 2024 is the way data is received and so much so that the rolling cache will play a much more important role in your overall settings and could potentially have a very positive or very negative impact on your performance overall in this video we'll take a deep dive into the rolling cache so you can find the best settings to suit your system the principal difference is Flight Simulator 2020 used a combination of local data storage for planes, airports, points of interest, meshes, textures, and so on, as well as stream data, aerials, photogrammetry, vector data, and the digital elevation model. For stream data, the sim anticipates what information you're going to need next and puts that into the rolling cache if you had it enabled, ready to be loaded into memory as and when required. In Flight Simulator 2024, everything is streamed. Only the core SIM files are held on the local storage. Although you will, however, have the option to store them locally if you wish. That'll be aircraft, world updates, that type of thing. And in certain circumstances, that may be preferable, but we'll cover that later on. That information will be streamed to your rolling cache if you have it enabled. And an important point to note here for both 2020 and 2024 and applicable to both PC and console. The sim will always look to the rolling cache first if enabled for the information it requires before streaming the data if it's not there. The principle being that it can pull information from the rolling cache faster than it can receive the stream data. That however is not always the case subject to your system and bandwidth. And once again we'll revisit this topic a little bit later. A rolling cache works very much like a conveyor belt and based on a first in, first out basis. However many gigabytes you allocate to your rolling cache will determine, if you like, the length of your conveyor belt. Information required is pulled from the conveyor belt into memory and any information not required is discarded. But we also have to bear in mind that the more boxes there are on our conveyor belt, the more searching we have to do and the longer it may take us to find a particular box. And here the respective speed of your hard drive will play an important part. The function of a rolling cache is to provide quick and easy access to information that was recently downloaded to prevent it from being streamed again. So in principle, if you've been flying in and around a particular airport or area, that data is already in your rolling cache. It's not deleted when you shut down. So if you started your next flight in the same area, perhaps the same airport, loading times may well be quicker. As you fly away from the airport, that information may get overwritten. There's also an option to enable a manual cache, but we won't touch on that here as it's beyond the scope of this video. Flight Simulator 2020 was very memory hungry due to the amount of data that it loaded, much of which you may not have even looked at it and not needed. Flight Sim 2024 is going to be more focused, if that's the right word, and only download what you need when you need it. If you'd like a little bit more information on this aspect, then check out my previous video, link in the notes below. The rolling cache is enabled or disabled in SIM and the size of the rolling cache is measured in gigabytes. And shortly we'll touch on who's going to need the rolling cache and what sort of size should it be. But first let's cover off some basics and important elements as it's quite likely the vast majority of users will need to use a rolling cache. A reminder that a rolling cache is a designated storage space on your hard drive. It follows, therefore, that the speed of that hard drive is relatively important. The figures shown above are read speeds and are indicative only. Write speeds are often slower. It goes without saying that faster is better. And a device that uses flash memory, such as a solid-state drive or preferably a non-volatile memory device, could make a huge difference to performance overall. A traditional hard drive using a magnetic spinning platter could well induce stutters whilst it waits for the information to be read and transferred. NVMe drives with 500 gig to 1 terabyte are not expensive, and the recommended selection if your motherboard supports them, and can be found for as little as 50 pounds or about 60 US dollars. The relevance of what I just said, of course, is linked to your bandwidth or internet speed. Let's have a look at our rolling cache in SIM. From the main menu, we select Options, then General Options, 
and then data. If we then scroll down to the bottom, we'll find the rolling cache information. I'm using Flight Sim 2020 here, but it's very similar to 2024. And the options available within 2024 seem unchanged. Here you can see that the rolling cache is currently on at 16 gigabytes. And importantly, it also shows the rolling cache path. And in this case, the path is the default one that would have been installed with the SIM. And it's on my system drive, which is C. And to be honest, I don't really want it on my C drive. It's also not my fastest drive available. But it makes perfect sense to direct your rolling cache to your fastest drive on your system. In this case, it's a 2 terabyte NVMe drive. I've created a folder. You can give it any name you want. I'll select that folder and we'll see the location within the SIM has now changed. It's as quick and as easy as that. This will now be the location that the system will use for my rolling cache. As I've changed location, note that the cache limit has reverted back to zero. I can change that, of course. I'm going to make this one 32 gigabyte. It's also here where you can enable or disable the rolling cache. For this example, I'm going to leave the rolling cache on, then select Apply and Save, and it will now create the new rolling cache of 32 GB. Doesn't take long, and now it's done. So once you install Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, make sure you select and put the rolling cache to your fastest drive if possible. It can make a big difference. The following example is for illustrative purposes only, due to the number of variables that measures the data being downloaded on the left with the rolling cache off, compared to exactly the same flight and details being downloaded with the rolling cache on. I'm connected to the internet via my Ethernet directly to my router, and the graph represents the amount of data being downloaded in real time, using the Performance tab within Windows Task Manager. When looking at the graph, bear in mind that dependent on the peak download required, so the graph will rescale. The graph on the left is currently in megabits per second, and the graph on the right is kilobytes per second, but that should rescale now momentarily. But what I hope is fairly evident, there is considerably smaller download taking place with the rolling cache on, as having previously loaded this flight with the rolling cache on, it is pulling that data directly from the rolling cache, rather than download it. With the rolling cache on, currently peak download is something in the region of about uh, 135 megabits per second, and with the rolling cache off, about 500 megabits per second at its peak. I think that this illustrates the point well enough. Just bear in mind, overall, it's the average download and not the peak that is the most important. To digress momentarily, if you're wondering what I use for my tests, it's some marvellous freeware. It's the Grumman J2F5, commonly referred to as the Duck. It's freeware available on flightsim.to and from developer Fly and Dive. This American World War II amphibian is somewhat unique in having a central float, but also being a tail dragger. If you like your warbirds and you like a bit of fun, it's recommended. Link, as always, in the notes below. OK, back on topic. To determine whether or not you should use the rolling cache and what size it will be, will very much depend on your system and your bandwidth. So the best setting for one person may not suit another. It will depend on your GPU and CPU, obviously, your bandwidth, and the amount of memory you have installed, combined with the size of the rolling cache selected. To get the best out of the SIM, it's going to require an element of testing on your behalf. So I can't tell you what's best for you, but I can provide you with some guidelines. And of course, everything I've said here is going to be subject to the reliability and consistency of the Microsoft servers, taking the various factors into account. If you have a very good bandwidth with strong and consistent download performance, be that 600, 800 megabits per second, or perhaps a gigabyte, we won't know till we get our hands on the full SIM then the chances are you won't need the rolling cache at all. You could turn it off and eliminate that step. If, on the other hand, you don't have a fast internet connection, or it's not stable, then the rolling cache is going to be a requirement, the size of which you'll have to determine through trial and error. I recommend moving up in 8GB steps 
and subject to the drive that you're using, I currently don't recommend anything over 32GB. And of course, memory will be a consideration for PC users. Bear in mind the SIM cannot access more than 32GB. Having something like 8GB is going to be a disadvantage as you're constantly going to be calling on the rolling cache. Finding the best settings for your system is going to be a matter of trial and error until you find the sweet spot for your system. What I do recommend is when you test it, test it in a typical environment that you fly or perhaps slightly harsher than what you would normally use. Have some photogrammetry and also have some water and reflections because ultimately you want to find that sweet spot, set it and forget it. If you don't have reliable internet, and the sim is full of stutters and pauses, then you may have to consider reverting to manual cache. Once the sim is out in the wild, we'll be able to do some more definitive tests, but my hardware components will be different to yours, and therefore results may vary. This really is one of those aspects that you need to do yourself. Once the sim is out in the wild, there'll be no doubt a whole bucket load of different videos on YouTube saying use this setting or that setting. Use this tweak or this hack. But for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, don't forget your rolling cache settings. They're going to be far more important than they ever were in its predecessor. If this video has given you a better understanding on the workings of rolling cache and will help in some small way in you finding the best setting for your system, then objective achieved. If that's the case for you, then don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Thank you as always for joining me. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And ciao for now.